I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. Last time we were introduced to a wonderful young lady, Dorothy Glade, and we today have her husband with us. Spencer, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks sharing for having your story. me on here. Yeah, you've got quite an interesting story and you're so <laughs> young and, yeah. and you've had quite the experiences in life. So tell us a little bit, were you born here in Utah? Yep, I was born in Salt Lake City. Were you? Um, Went to school here, I guess. And yep. uh, moved to Syracuse when I was like, oh, I think one and a half. Oh yeah. And uh, I lived in that same square mile for twenty <laughs> years. <laughs> Brothers and sisters. I have lived? two sisters. Yeah. Um, one is a year younger than me, and then the other one is, I think, three years younger than me. Oh okay. Now you you were born in the Covenant, as we say. Your parents were active members, and yep. They, and I guess they're still, I mean, they're active, and you just lived a normal Mormon life, I guess, at the beginning, and uh, primary, and mm -hmm. all. What else did you yep. do? Just um, deacon, teacher, priest. Were you? The whole, the whole thing. <laughs> seminary? Yep, uh, seminary? all four years throughout yeah. high school. Okay. And I think some of these things that we kind of talk about being in the church, you know, being in primary and being in the Aaronic priesthood and seminary, four-year seminary, mm -hmm. and you were an Eagle Scout, right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? I mean, all those things kind of indicate that we're there, we're there, we're active, we're listening, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, you probably read the Book of Mormon or at least some of it in seminary and the other scriptures, as we call mm -hmm. them, and, and your folks were active. You probably had, you have family home evenings and family prayers and that yep. whole, all that stuff. Yeah. So it's interesting that when, when we'll talk about it more later, when you start learning things that you'd never heard before, it's kind of like, well, where, where was that information? Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny. Anyway, so what happens uh, in high school, after high school, you? Um, well, a lot of stuff happened after high school. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the first thing? Um, I went to Utah State. Uh, did a semester up there okay. right before my mission. Okay. And then... Uh, and you were called to the... I was mission? Uh, Colorado Springs. Oh, Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. Now, before you, a missionary goes into his mission field, they say, they go through the temple, right? They get the Melchizedek priesthood mm -hmm. and, and then uh, go through the temple. Did you do any prep classes for the temple? Or yeah. Did was, missionaries uh, do that? I didn't. Uh, we didn't have temple prep classes, I don't think, when I went. Yeah, there was a couple, through, but... a couple times that we went through. Like, we didn't really talk about much. Yeah, that happens in the temple. No, so. no, I don't do that. Did you have missionary prep classes though? Did you go to any of those? I didn't go to any of those. Did they have them? Yeah. Oh, okay, but you didn't <laughs> go to any of those. No. <laughs> okay. Well, tell us in a little bit about uh, the temple. What did you think of that when you got in there? I I just thought it was. You know, part of the norm. Yeah, Fol the folks were there. Yeah. Folks were there. I did it really... seem strange to you, or did you? No. Yeah, it didn't seem strange to me either. Really, basically, you just did it. It was. Yeah. It was strange, but you just said, "Well, that's." Yeah. Now that I think about it, now it's like, yeah, that was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> 
but going through it, you just figure. Did you did you have like grandparents there too, and mm -hmm. lots of family when you went through? I had a lot of my family there. Yeah. Did you have the beard? No. no. Okay. <laughs> I just, couldn't grow a beard. Just then. curious. <laughs> well, you're doing a good job now. So uh, you go through the temple, and and then I guess you head out on your mission, and mm -hmm. and uh, tell yep. us about that. Um, I was only out for about a month and a half, and the Sunday right before I was supposed to leave, I had a really severe seizure in my sleep. And when I woke up in the morning, I couldn't move. Oh, my goodness. And Nothing like that had ever happened before, I guess. Like, I've had a couple seizures before that, oh. um, but nothing that serious. Um, and so... I stayed a couple more weeks um, while I went to the doctor to figure out what was going wrong, on, yeah. switch my medicine a couple times, yeah. um, and then I finally decided this is this probably it, it's too hard to do right now. Right. So it, it'd just be easier if I was home and I could go to the doctor whenever. Okay. Um, so well, that happens, I guess, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Obviously. So you came home. Mm -hmm. And did they figure it out, what, what you um, were dealing with? We, we never really figured out what's been causing them. Um, Are you free from them now? Or? Yeah, I haven't had one for a while, so the okay. medicine I'm on right now is kept uh, well, keeping you. it under control pretty well. But this ended up being a big impact on your life. Um, I mean, anytime someone comes home early, there's... Lots going on, lots yeah. being said, and so on. Tell us about that. Yeah. Like it, it wasn't too much of a problem in my home ward, but when I started going to, like the singles wards, I went back up to Logan to do more school. Yeah. And I, I just kind of felt ostracized. Mm. You know, like I, I'm second class because I didn't finish my mission. Yeah. So, and just a couple things happened up there, and I'm like. Really? Just, it, it shouldn't be that big a deal that I came home for medical reasons. It's, right. It's not like I did something terrible or Were anything. Were you able to talk to a bishop or anything about it, or did you? No. Uh, no. I'm more of a quiet person, so I just, like, <laughs> kind of swept it under the rug. Yeah. And but it bothered you. I mean, so people would be so judging and yeah. judgmental. Yeah, but I there was, are a lot of missionaries coming home, aren't there? I mean... Have you run into others that have yeah. had experiences? Um, and actually, my best friend had the same experience. Uh, he has really bad asthma, and he was up in Washington, and so it was Washington State. Yeah, yeah. and it was driving him nuts. So he came home early because yeah. of that. Did he like, feel the same way? The exact same way, because when he went to the um, the singles ward uh, yeah. over by where his parents live, um, we had grown up with. All the girls there, sure. and we went through high school with them, and so it, we we were basically second class citizens to them. Yeah, there's such a judgment, it, and <laughs> in so many ways. I mean, there's a pride in Mormonism that doesn't allow for much imperfection, right? Mm -hmm. And then judging others, and how your family though was supportive and mm -hmm. understanding, I guess, and yeah. Like yeah. th they wanted me to go back out, but they supported my decision to And you did have stay. a choice, I guess, to go back yes. out. But still, you were in an unknown situation, I guess, mm -hmm. still. And, yeah. yeah, it was about the December after, um, after I came home that I was just like, I, I can't just, like, what, what, what happens if something really bad happens, like I have a seizure oh, right. and get hit by a car or something. Right, or drive, yeah, just or, something, yeah. Yeah, it, it'd be much worse if I was out in Colorado. Yeah, that's for sure. And, so, kind of backing up a little bit, what did you think of, uh, of the Bible at this point in your life? When you went out on your mission, you were getting, getting ready to represent the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. What was your relationship with the Bible and... I I love the Bible. Did you? Even yeah. then? Yeah. Oh, I, good. Had you read it then? Some? Mm -hmm. and in seminary, I, I guess, too. Yeah, I love uh, the New Testament. Yeah. And mostly um And Paul. had you read it before you went on your mission? Mm -hmm. Really? And and you loved Paul then? And yeah. Wow. Well, good for you. That's not always the case, is it? 
<laughs> had, had you read the Book of Mormon too? Uh huh. Had you? And did yeah. you pray about it? And you know, yeah, I, I really liked reading like, the Book of Mormon. It, and felt like you were ready to to represent mm -hmm. the. One of the things I've mentioned here before, and probably too often maybe, but uh, I felt years later I kind of looked back on my mission and realized I was representing the church always. It was all about Joseph Smith and the First Vision and the Book of Mormon and Plan of Salvation and Families Are Forever. Mm -hmm. it really wasn't representing Jesus. Did you Yeah, sense I, I noticed that, that when I was in the MTC. That it was um, a lot about... Like, it, it was like the... Uh, the fourth discussion before you, you even touched yeah. on the atonement of the Savior and you, all that. You kind of, f or at least I felt like I was kind of selling the church as opposed to trying to build a relationship, have people build a relationship with Jesus. What did you think of Jesus, I mean, as a Mormon? Um, I, I, I had a, a, a very firm posi nah, position of that he was my savior and he okay when he died on the cross that's when it was done he took you my felt sins. That as a mormon you felt that as mm -hmm. opposed to the garden of gethsemane had you like, heard that story mm -hmm. that, like i heard that but ever since i can remember I, I always believed that that's where it started in the garden and then he finished the work on the cross. Yes. Well, you're a very unusual man that way because <laughs> not a lot of Mormons actually believe that. I mean, we're, and many of the apostles and others have talked about how important, well, where the, the shedding of blood and everything else was done in the Garden of Gethsemane. Well, not the actual shedding, but the droplets of blood and sweat, as it were, drops of blood. But interesting. So you always mm -hmm. had that. So. So tell us then a little bit what happens after this uh, coming home from the mission. Um, church, church-wise, are you going to? You're going back, still going to church, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I, I continue going to church a little bit, and yeah. then single adults or, or yeah. young adults. And then, as time went on, I I started feeling that ostracization sure. more and more, and I I was just like whatever. So, what so I you, stopped going to church. And yeah, that's the first thing, isn't it, kind of, yeah. 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 And it, it just got to a point where I didn't want to have anything to do with religion uh, in general. Yeah. Were your folks disappointed, or were they aware of it? They didn't really know. Because um, you were a Utah State, or? Yeah. And, yeah. and never really talked about stuff like that. It was just... You just knew their answers, or how were you? About, like you just didn't communicate with them. Yeah, or? we just never talked about that subject. Like I'd go and go down and see them almost every weekend, but and they go to church and you'd stay home, or did you go I, to church? I with went them? to church with them. Oh, so then um, they didn't know, I guess. Well, I, I like that word. That, that's where all my friends were. Oh, I see. So the ward you'd grown up in, mm -hmm. I guess. So. So you felt comfortable. You had a testimony, of course, I guess, and of the church. And so then, what happens? Um, so I moved back uh, down to Kaysville because my my best friend he wanted to move out of his parents' house. Oh, okay. He was just sick and tired of his mom lording over him. <laughs> so now, was he a good member of the church, so to speak? I mean, mm -hmm. was yeah, he yeah. was kind of in the same boat. Um, like our stories are pretty similar. Really. Um, now, you weren't questioning the, the truthfulness of the church, just in your own heart and mind. You just weren't living or going to church and yeah. probably, I don't know what else to fill in there, but you just felt, okay, I'm not going to church because you felt ostracized, and, um, and he felt the same way. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so then what happens? And that's when I met my wife. Uh, she used to work with him, and she came over to play video games one night. Oh, were they friendly? I mean, were they... Did, did he think she was a, a potential date or something there? No. Nah, okay. um, so actually, you weren't stealing your your no. <laughs> boyfriend's, uh, your friend's girlfriend? Uh. No. Uh, he was actually dating a, a girl who was pretty abusive to him. And oh. me and Dorothy were like, why are you doing this? Oh. And he just wouldn't listen. So okay. we started hanging out more because we were frustrated with Tyler. <laughs> 
So you were bonding that way, huh? Yeah. Okay. So you, and and now she's Christian. Does she you tell, share with her that you're Mormon? What does mm -hmm. she, what do you what did she say to that? Um. At first, she was just like, "I'm not stepping foot into a Mormon church." Mormon church. And did she ever? Well, yes. I guess she did. She, yeah. <laughs> what while we were dating, she did because. Uh, one of my close cousins got his eagle, mm. and she didn't know that like the eagle ceremony is usually held in like the in the church, yeah. the cultural hall. Right. And like we pull up to a church, and she's like, "It's here." I'm like, "Yeah, it's just in the gym." Oh, come on. <laughs> she was okay to do that. <laughs> yeah. So then, uh, did she invite you to her church? Is she going to church at this mm -hmm. point? Yeah. And did she invite you then to? Yeah. Um, I thought it was pretty interesting. The music and... Mm -hmm. it, it was very different. Yeah. I was like... You hadn't been in a Christian church before, I guess. No. I was like, yeah. this is very different, but yeah. whatever. I was still that indifferent towards religion in general. But if you had gone to a church or said, okay, we're going we're gonna to start going to church, you'd have gone to the Mormon church, right? Or you'd have gone back to the bishop and said, okay, I need to get my life right and... So I'll be a good Mormon boy, or some would, um, or is that maybe I'm putting words in your mouth there? Nah, uh, like when I mean, we you weren't questioning the church's truthfulness, were you at this point? No. No. Okay. Yeah, I, just for the longest time it was that way, um, yeah. and often, uh, oftentimes, I would have to work on Sundays, yeah. so Makes I couldn't go to church. Right. So it was an easy excuse. Yeah. Um, now, Dorothy, I think, mentioned that she started sharing some things with you that you hadn't heard before. And mm -hmm. that's going, you know, going back to the first part of our story here where we learned things that we had never heard before. So what, what did she share with you? Um, just some of the stuff that, um, of the history of the church mm. and uh, a lot of the stuff about Joseph Smith. Um, I'm a direct descendant descendant of Hiram so it caught me Hiram Smith Hiram Smith oh yeah and so it caught me off guard because that was my family yeah. and you know how big family is <laughs> sure. in the church sure and and so I guess there's a lot of pride with that too that you're related that, to Hiram Smith there was a little bit yeah um, that, but what was she sharing just I don't want to again put words in your mouth but <laughs> what was she sharing um about the multiple wives and the treasure hunting were Had the biggest ones. Had you heard of that ones. before? No. Yeah. Did you know he was married to a lot of polygam to polygamy wives? And no, I thought it was just Emma. And 14-year-olds and women that were already married? No, I knew nothing you about that. You haven't heard any of that. You've learned it now since, I yeah. guess. But isn't that shocking? And see, I mean, you're young in the church, and I, but I was so many years in the church, and I didn't hear that. I have heard now the leaders say that they're trying to inoculate, using that word of vaccine kind of a word, inoculate the youth um, with this information now so that when they get older, like you and me, uh, they won't be so shocked. You know, they'll say, well, we've always talked about that stuff. But still, I don't think very many Mormons know about that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else that she brought up? Um. No, those those were the biggest parts. Yeah. Um, cause, Did you ever study? Oh, go ahead. Because I knew after they they said that they stopped polygamy, that they still practice it because um, was it my great 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 grandfather was Joseph F. Smith, and he had oh. I think well, six you do, wives. Yeah, I do have quite a pedigree there, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he had six wives and. Yeah, of course, they continued those that had wives in 1890. They get, got to keep them, but mm -hmm. they did practice it for a while after. Yeah, I think. so th that one was in a big shock. Yeah, you knew about that. Mm -hmm. uh, had you heard anything about, like, the Book of Mormon and archaeology or the Book of Abraham? And you yeah. hadn't heard any of that. Mm -hmm. Now, Dorothy said that she went to the bishop, so what? tell us about that whole thing. Did you um, go with her? Yeah, I went with her. Okay. And now, is this is your bishop from your when you were growing up? Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody you knew and yes. knew you. Yeah, we were uh, trying to find someone to marry us. Oh, okay. And so, and did you bring up questions there? Um, no, she mostly had all the questions. Yeah. And I, I just wanted her to be okay with it, 
just so we'd have someone to marry us because okay. I tried to contact like uh, like the mayor or someone like uh, not religious okay. so we wouldn't have that tension like a public, between uh, yeah. yeah between religions um, were but, you in the back of your mind hoping that she would eventually become a Mormon or did you th think was, that you would eventually become active again and all that there was a little bit um, I know that's usually in the back of our minds, isn't it? Yeah. Af yeah. After a while of being married, um, like, after seeing her being so, uh, uh, what's the word? Full of the Spirit? Or yeah. Is that, just I don't know what. So firm in her belief oh. that I, I envied that. And what belief was was particular for you what did she well it, it was just the fact that she was so sure in what she believed and I wanted to be so sure in what I believed and you weren't and yeah. I didn't feel that way uh -huh. was this about Jesus then and the cross or the Bible or anything specific just, uh, it was just a general she just had a good confidence that she was had mm -hmm. been saved yeah right? she had been born again and had been saved and mm -hmm. Jesus loved her, and yeah, I don't know, as Mormons, we just kind of have sometimes that feeling like we're really not sure. My wife used to ask me, well, you're sure we're going to make it to the celestial kingdom? And I'd say, well, yeah, we haven't killed anybody, and we've <laughs> been, you know, pretty good people, and we're doing what we think we should. Everybody has that hope, mm -hmm. but they don't have that assurance, do they? Yeah, I, I kind of resigned the fact to, that I wasn't going to the celestial kingdom, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, you scratched that off be yeah. because of what people were saying about you or just in your heart you felt that? or Yeah, it was just... That's kind of a give up feeling, isn't it? Well, I'm not going to make it, so... Yeah, I kind of came to terms with it. It was just like, well, no big deal. Where, where did I you guess. think you were headed? <laughs> uh, what, what's the second one? Well, the, there's terrestrials in the middle. Yeah, that terrestrial, one. Terrestrial, <laughs> that one. I totally forgot. You weren't really bad at telestial, but uh, yeah. terrestrial maybe. Like, I was still kind of a good person. Like, I didn't, like, the yeah. worst I had on my record was a couple speeding tickets. Yeah, like, but you'd always be looking up, right? You'd always see the celestial kingdom out there that you, you couldn't make. Yeah, I, I don't like that judgment, judgment. That's one of the great things that I feel about coming to Christianity is... I've given up that pride and that judgment. I feel, mm -hmm. like you say, confident, like you're Dorothy, confident in, in that I'm saved mm -hmm. and what Jesus did for me on the cross. And there's no hope anymore. I know that, uh, that he paid for my sins and his righteousness makes me righteous mm -hmm. because I believe that. That's a great feeling, isn't it? Have you sensed that now too then? Yeah. I, you, you kept going to church, I guess, and saw what she had. Yeah, I, I stopped going to the the Mormon church, and like I would just go with her because I didn't want to spend like five hours in church. <laughs> <laughs> just went when the rest of my family went. Yeah, and so like, what did you think of the music? I liked it and the, the words up on the screen usually and in, in uh, Christian. I just I just liked the it was about Jesus. Yeah. Well, so did you have a like a, a born again moment or something that really? Yeah, tell I us did. about that. Um, how I was envious and yeah uh, about that, I started to get really desperate because I was I was praying like I wanted it so bad, and finally I was just like, you wanted what you know she what? had. Huh? Yeah, I'll, and I would watch um, some of your other episodes and. Oh. I'd see the same thing in them. I'm like, I want that so bad. Really? And just one night, um, I had a dream that, uh, so it, it started out, I was, like, I had just finished my wood badge ticket things for scouts. Oh, good for you. And uh, my dad was the, like, the big scout master for yeah. the course I went through. Yeah. And Are you an owl? I'm a Bob White. Uh, I'm an owl. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> and so I, like we were sitting down 
in a meeting and then talking about wood badge and then out of nowhere he said bear your testimony i was like i was confused and it, it totally caught me off guard and so i started off with I know that Jesus is my savior. And it just hit me so hard that I just started to cry. And you never I, really verbalized or hit, it hit you that Jesus is your savior. Yeah. And it just I couldn't get anything else out. I was crying so hard and I and then the dream changed a little bit. As I was crying, I saw Jesus carrying the cross, and then after that, I saw it through his eyes. Oh, and my. I, like, I felt the weight of the cross. and Like the, you were carrying the cross. The weight of the cross and feeling it in my back where the lashings were, feel the wood digging into those, and... Oh, my goodness. And... It was it was so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and after after that I I blacked out in the dream. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big computer person. Yeah. And so when when it all went black, down in the I saw down in the corner of like my field of vision. Um, still in the dream. Still in the dream. Yeah. Uh, it said in like the old green um, oh, yeah. lettering from yeah. the really old computers, right. um, critical failure, um, rebooting. And right after that, it went uh, all, all white, so bright that I couldn't see anything else. And then as it faded into like focus, yeah. I saw my mom just like right here above me smiling wow and i felt so safe and and then she she looked up to say to someone i i, I didn't see who he said she said um, he's awake and then she looked back down at me and said you're going to be okay oh and that's when the dream ended and you felt the love of Jesus at that point. And I can't believe, Spencer, our time's totally gone. Oh, wow. <clears throat> and ended on such a wonderful note, though. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and good luck in all you're doing. I'm so sorry. See you later. Mm -hmm.